Welcome to City Talk. It's about town Deb, Debbie McCarthy. I'm so excited to be on location, Northern Nevada Hopes, right here in Reno, Nevada. You are gonna hear some amazing heartfelt stories. You are gonna be hearing from the CEO, Sharon Chamberlain, and I'm telling you, when you hear her words, you're gonna know this is where I need to be. Jeeve is also going to be on board with me today, but he's going to be interviewing me as well as me interviewing him, and he has an incredible story. Then you're also going to hear from Jenny. Jenny is a resident in Hope Springs, and Jenny's my new bestie, so I can't wait to tell her story. I'm going to do our quote. This is if you watch our show, you know I love to have a quote that matches what we talk about. Hope is a waking dream, Aristotle. So be prepared for inspiring stories. It's about town dev with City Talk. We'll be right back. Who is Northern Nevada Hopes? We're caregivers and cheerleaders. We're a lifeline and life-changing. Healthcare that's transforming our community. Welcome back to City Talk. It's About Town Deb, Debbie McCarthy. I am so honored to be here at Northern Nevada Hopes in Reno, Nevada. We're having a very special, heartwarming show today. And we're going to be talking with Jenny, and Jenny's going to share her story with us. But first, as you know, let me get my quote out first. What lies behind us and what lies before us are the tiny matters compared to what lies within us. And I feel like Jenny has so many moments that she's had in her life, and she's ready to shine bright. So I want to welcome Jenny to the set. Jenny Sosa. So say it again for me. Jenny Sosa. Sosa. Yes. And Jenny, you. you are a resident at Hope Springs. Yes. And I got to ask you, how are you feeling right this moment? Uh, a little nervous. A little nervous? <laughs> yes. How did you feel? But excited. Ex well, I'm, I'm excited. You're like my new bestie. Yeah, I'm thanks. so honored Likewise. to be talking to you. <laughs> so tell me, what brought you to the door of Hope Springs? Um, not just myself, but um, I was an addict, okay. an active addict. So... Um, I was working, I was um, doing a lot of bad things. Yes. So it got really out of hand. Um, I ended up working for this warehouse where, you know, this this girl just approached me. Like um, randomly? Yes. Um, I was doing really bad. I was starting to sleep in my car, right. but um, nobody knew that. So I, this girl just kept approaching me, but I, I kept praying to God. So I know it was God. And she told me about this program. Um, I remember knocking on the door. At Hope and, Springs? Yeah, nobody answered me. So I was like, oh, oh no. You know, I was, in, I was in active addiction. At that moment. So I was like, I'm leaving. But, I, but something's like, no, come back. So I come back. And um, they told me to come back. There's a waiting list. Um, at first, I wasn't really nice, you know, because I was like, if you don't have room for me, it is what it is, you know. It's not the end of the world. But they called me. Um, and they kept calling me. And... I think the third time I answered, and thank God I did because um, uh, they were they were gonna t they were tired of calling me, oh. and so I I'm here now. Thank God you're yeah, here. Yeah, I answered that phone. Thank goodness. Yeah. But see, I, that's what Hope Springs does yeah. in Northern Nevada. Hopes they don't give up on you. They don't. They will call you. Yeah, and I've experienced it. They will call you and call you call until you, you're like, you. okay, I get Fine. it. Yes. I'm here for a reason. Yeah. So when you took that first step in. You walk in the door. Yes. It was scary. How long have you been there now? Um, five months now. So five months. So yes. between the moment you walked in and the next few months, yeah. how, how did you see yourself changing? I come a long way. Um, I don't flip out. I don't, I don't uh, act on my emotion. I don't um, react on something that's not worth it it's pointless i don't i don't blame anyone for anything i own up to it, my mistakes so um i'm sober like i think i'm sober now like maybe four months congratulations and it's been four years i haven't been this over um not just physically but mentally so when you're there so i'm doing a little better at hopes yes. is there help and support with that is that the reason why you're oh, feeling like you've made progress oh yeah and um you don't our, blame anybody do you have like someone to talk to you know tell me what a typical day is like at hopes uh Springs. it's different every day for me just for me just right. because i don't like 
a, a routine. Ah, but some but, people need a routine. I need a routine. I mean, not like, a, <laughs> no, a routine, yes, but like there's always a different day there. Okay. Um, you know, you have your good days and your bad days, but the staff members is great. Like uh, Kyle's at my therapist. He's very helpful. I met um, Kyle. Julia. He was so cool. He was yeah, here to see you. Yeah, he's, he's really supportive. I love that. Um, the, it's just like... Just like Hope Springs, they don't give up on you. He doesn't give up on us, too. Uh, Julia is really good. My peer support, Benny. Um, I have Desiree. She goes to church with me. She meets me there. I meet her there. So everybody there is very supportive. Michael, he's my other peer support. And then I have Diana, which is a new member in there. Um, everybody there makes you feel really... Your family. Yes. You have a family now. Yeah. And you are a mom. Yes. So and they're supportive about that, too. I love that. So how does that yeah. work, being um, in the program with a child? It's been hard for me mentally just because I'm not with my kid, but they uh, help me a lot. So if I need to talk about it, um, I have another therapist here in Hopes, mm -hmm. AJ. So he helps me out with my kid too. It's so, a team. So it is. So you, I'm not alone. So you just didn't walk in the door yeah. and they just left you. Yeah. You have a team of yes. amazing partners Support, to yes. help walk you through this. Yeah. And if you're alone, it's because you choose to be alone ah. because the help is there. Well, you've talked about the staff members. Yes. I didn't even have to ask you that question. I love yeah. they, that they're such a big part of oh, that. Oh, yeah, they're the ones that help me. So why, why, is, why is Hope Springs important to you? It's important for me because um, all my life I did, I did everything by myself. Um, I had to learn how to make my own money. I left my home when I was like 14 years old. I came here to Job Corps. So I left my mom and my family. So I had to learn everything on my own. So it's important for me because they helped me. Um, it's crazy how, and I don't, I'm not trying to make my family look bad, but people that don't even know me have helped me more than my family has. So and I don't care what no one says, but hope's okay, been important but for me now. Families who you are oh, around. Yes. Yeah. They, don't, they make sure I'm not in the streets. Oh well, yeah. We and I have a roof you. and, and you I have, have a roof over your head and, and insurance and I have the dental and therapy oh. for my kids. Wait, wait, wait. They, I, they help me all with all I that. I had no idea about that. Yeah. About they, the whole insurance part of they it? They help you apply for the Medicaid. And oh, how nice. So they have all the resources here. But to help it's you up make to it you. to the yes. next day. But you also have to be willing to change and willing to want to better yourself. What message would you like to share with everybody out there um, today? You're not alone. Um, and you shouldn't be embarrassed to tell people who you really are. And if you're an act, and if you have an addiction, um, it's okay. Nobody judges you here. Um, and if you want to change your life, you know, just come here. Just come here and ask for help, and it, it, it will change your life. You just have to be willing to, and don't be embarrassed. Um, there's more people like me out there. I know. I do have one more question. We were talking yes. before the interview, and it just brought this all together. We were saying how there's so many team members that help you. Yes. And our community has come together to help pro to create this. Yes. You know, Northern Nevada Hopes and Hope Springs, and there's yeah. many more projects coming in. You would mention you're going to be a part of the Reno Works. Yes. Tell me how that how that got. How did you get connected with that? I think it was Kyle and Benny. They're very supportive and um, they see stuff in me that I don't see. You know, when they see your light and you're just like, oh, I'm not a good person, but they say I am. So they believe in me and um, push me. So I'm here doing it. It's something I didn't want to do. I'm like, oh, another program. I'm like, I've already been here five months. I got to be here another. But um, it's not I, people that come in. I tell them, don't rush. There's no reason to rush. Um, when you want to do something good, it takes time and you have to allow them to help you. And you have to be vulnerable. You have to be accountable for the bad things you do, too. So, uh, yeah, it's it's nice. I'm glad I'm here. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for having me here. I am. Jenny, thank you for being so open and authentic and honest. Thanks. I know those of you out there right now, you might be a Jenny. Right now, you may be where Jenny was and you're saying, oh my gosh, I'm afraid to ask for help. I'm afraid to knock on that door. What if I knock and nobody answers? Yeah. It may take two or three knocks, but here at Northern Nevada Hopes and at Hopes Springs, we are here for you. We are here for you to knock as many times and we're, if you fall, we're going to pick you up. Yeah. So I'm honored today yeah. to be here with Jenny Thank and you. we're going to take another break and we come back. We're going to talk with Jeev. So hang tight. It's About Town Deb. I'm here at Northern Nevada Hopes in Reno, Nevada. So honored to be here. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. It's About Town Dub, Debbie McCarthy with City Talk. Again, I'm so honored to be here at Northern Nevada Hopes, downtown Reno, Reno, Nevada, beautiful backdrop. And my next guest I get to interview is Jeeve Iverson. Jeeve has a story as well, and it's heartwarming as ever. And I'm so honored to be able to introduce you to Jeeve Iverson. Jeeve not only uses the services here, you're actually an employee here now. How cool is that? Yeah. So let me start with my quote. And then we're going to dig deep into your story. So here it is. Here's our quote for this segment. In seeking help, we find strength. And in being seen, we discover our path to healing. I feel like you've discovered your path. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I've had my journey with hopes for about half of a decade now. Um, it started when I was in college and, um, being a young gay man, I knew that I needed to get um, special health care. And one of those things was being prescribed PrEP. Um, so, so what is that? Can I ask what that yeah. is? I don't know what that is. Some yeah. of you may not know what that is. So PrEP is a medication where um, it helps fight the virus for HIV, okay. AIDS, um, and it has really helped reduce the amount of people who have had HIV it turning into AIDS. So before Finding Hopes, what challenges were you facing? Yeah, so before Finding Hopes, I was um, in college and I just needed to find primary care. I was working for a company that I had great insurance at. I knew that I just needed to find healthcare. That's where a challenge came in, but with a simple Google search, I was able to find hopes because um, I was just searching up prep and where to get it. And I knew that I was graduating from the university soon. So yeah, I set up primary care with a provider here who I'm still seeing and it's been great. So did they also offer you, like we, we were talking with Jenny, um, the emotional support? Did you ever have times, you know, being in college and being out on your own and trying to find that right primary care that understands you? Um, were you able to get the emotional help with being able to talk to somebody at the same time on this journey? Yeah. Every time I actually came in for a visit, my primary care would ask me, um, are you feeling depressed, do you need any mental health support, um, we could get you, a provider. Do you feel safe? All yeah, those questions. All those questions. I go, I, I go here too. So I, lo I yeah. love being asked those questions because somebody needs to open that door for you to be able exactly. to answer, yes, I might need a little extra help. Exactly. And it wasn't until I graduated college and I moved down to LA where um, I realized how special HOPES was um, because they do have a lot of um, community health centers in LA um, and they are really accessible, but I never had the same supportive team like I had here. So yeah. speaking of teams, that was, you're taking me right into that. Of the staff members in the team, like with Jenny, like she just, man, she named them, their family. Is there anybody special in the staff that really helped you find your path to where you are now? I actually came back to Reno um, about a year and a half ago because um, I was facing some family tragedy. My mom was killed. And I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, and when I came back to Reno, um, the first, one of the first things I did was I came back to Hopes to see my primary care provider because I knew I needed support. Um, I was already seeing a therapist that I'm still seeing now. Um, they're not at Hopes, but my primary care provider, when she heard about what I went through, immediately she was like, we need to get a behavioral health specialist in here. I just want to make sure that you are okay as possible and I'm here with you through this journey um, and yeah I was able to talk to somebody from our behavioral health team um, and it's kind of crazy working with 
these people now where I'm like, you helped me get through a huge crisis in my life. Um, I'm only 27. Like, I don't know how I'm supposed to deal with any of this. Then my professor from UNR, who is also a really close friend and a board member here, Todd Feltz. I love Todd. Todd is great. Hello, shout out Todd. Yeah, yes. shout out to He's Todd. Great. He came to my mom's funeral and it was so touching um, to know that I had support like that. And a few months later, he reached out to me and he said, hey, Jeeve, I don't know if you're in a mindset to work again. Um, because when that happened with my mom, um, I actually got laid off from my job two months later because it was the tech industry and we're seeing a whole bunch of tech layoffs. Um, and he said, Hopes is a very healing place. You get to see people heal every day. And I feel like that's what you need to see. My mom was a very active member in this community. She ran a food pantry. She was constantly helping out um, underserved populations. And she worked for Job Corps. Uh, so hearing Jenny, who you just interviewed, talk We're about all Job Corps, it's, it it's just all coming together. So I told Todd, I was like, yeah, you know what? That feels right. Um, my mom comes to me in special ways and the stars are just aligning for me to be at Hopes and to continue on this healing journey, this epic journey that I feel like I'm on with healing here. So yeah, shout out to Todd. <laughs> I'm going to start like, I, I, I get this way on my show. I feel like I'm right where I need to be from the moment when I was first here to the moment right now, to meeting Jenny, to be here with you. I totally get it. I, I get it. And I love the idea that you are so open, like with Jenny and honest. And I feel if more of us would be honest and say, man, I struggle. Some days I don't want to get out of bed. Like I, I, even me about town dub, I think it's important that we understand that hopes is a place where you can walk in and feel loved and needed and wanted and cared about. And, and I would, <laughs> I've been you, I've been in that doctor's office with my doctor and, and they've asked those questions and I'm like, should I honestly say that I'm struggling? If I'm going to say it to anybody, it's going to be right here. Yeah. And I'm just so honored and touched that I get to be here with you at this moment. So, so I don't want to get too emotional. So let, let's go on to another, another question. <laughs> Whew. Why is hopes important to you? And what would you like to say to everybody out there? Hopes is really important to me because it gives people the ability to have affordable health care in a country where it makes it really hard for people to get health care. Um, the support that I have felt from Hopes, not only as a patient, but as a staff member has been incredible. Um, like I, it was a year and a half ago where my life changed. And with that, I'm still going through a huge process of having to get ready to sell my childhood home, going through that stuff. Um, and my team here provides me the flexibility to do that. We all know that we're human here and people who work for hopes, they're just very warm, giving people. There's a reason why hope staff work here. And it's because they know that they can help people. So Whew. that's what hope says to me. So one last question. Where is there, was there a moment in this journey where you went, yes, I'm where I'm supposed to be? Was there a moment or somebody that really made you feel you were right, right where you had to be at this moment? Yes, there has been several patient interviews that I've had because I get to interview patients about their stories and about how they heal, where every time I have one of those interviews, it makes me feel like I'm where I belong. Um, 
any time that I get to share those interviews, I feel like I'm where I belong. Any time that like even my boss and I were having one-on-ones and we're talking about growth or we're talking about sometimes it's a hard week, um, she makes me feel like I'm where I belong. So yeah, there's a lot of moments, honestly. Um, I've been with Hopes for about 10 months now, um, and it has just been a very beautiful journey. <sighs> Thank you, G, for sharing your journey and your heart with us. And I got to tell you, this is probably one of my best shows. And the idea that I get to be sitting here with Jenny with Jeeve, and then you're going to get to um, meet Sharon Chamberlain, and you're going to get to hear an interview where he's interviewing me. But I just want to say thank you to Hopes for the opportunity for me to be here, to listen to these stories, to bring them to you out there. So we're going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. It's About Town Deva City Talk. Who is Northern Nevada Hopes? We're caregivers and cheerleaders. We provide support and treat with dignity. We're the first choice and a last resort. We're a lifeline and life-changing. We are Northern Nevada Hopes, healthcare that's transforming our community. Welcome back. It's About Town Dub, Debbie McCarthy with City Talk. I'm so excited to be right here in Reno, Nevada, Northern Nevada Hopes Clinic. <sighs> it has been an amazing, amazing afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed as much as I'm enjoying it. I mean, just to talk to Jenny and to talk to Jeev, I'm kind of like sweating bullets here because we're going to be turning the table. He's going to be interviewing me. Yes, we are. But um, <laughs> let's, let's get the quote out of the way. You know me, I like my quotes. In seeking help, we find strength. And in being seen, we discover the path to healing. My journey with hopes embodies this truth highlighting the power of support and acceptance. And acceptance is exactly how I feel right now, this moment. And from the first moment I walked in the Hope stores. Okay, Jeeve, turning it over to you now. Whew, take a right. breath. Yes. <laughs> a little nervous. <laughs> I know you don't get. Do you get interviewed often? Not very like this? often. Okay, well, I'm glad I get to do it. You then. get to do it. Yeah. Okay, I better flex my interview skills right now. <laughs> I'm really sweaty. You're gonna do great. So I Jenny, can't wait to hear your if story. you're listening, she asked like she. Do I ever get nervous? This is the moment. We'll show her this. We'll be we'll like show her, Jenny. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> Jeff gets nervous too. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so I was just wondering, how did you find hopes, and what brought you here initially? Well, um, being in the media doing marketing, um, I was invited to the grand opening of Hopes right here, this building. And um, which you're gonna hear later when I talk to Sharon, I'm gonna share this with her as well. I, I heard her words, like, this is the place. And I'm like, well, if this is good enough for the CEO to be here, like, I, I, need, I need healthcare. I don't know where to go. Um, I don't have insurance. I haven't had insurance in a long time. And I was embarrassed to let people know that I don't have insurance. And I just felt so comfortable. And I just felt like, as we talked with Jenny and you, like knocking on that door. So um, I made the phone call and I had mentioned that I was here to my cousin, Georgia. And she said, well, actually I have Dr. Rivera at Hopes. And my friend, her friend, Jenny, told her about Dr. Rivera. I'm like, well, if you two love her, I'm gonna love her. So um, I made that call, made the appointment, and I had my first um, experience here, so. Amazing, yeah. okay, so how was that experience with Dr. <laughs> Rivera and? Well, before, so as yeah. um, you've heard, we've all heard about hopes. The minute you walk in, um, I didn't have insurance and I was like, how am I gonna even afford this visit? I didn't even know what to expect. And um, it was pretty cool to walk in and I, have, I had somebody to represent me for patient services. And I've never got into a doctor's place where somebody sits with you privately. And I had a folder and they told me all about hopes. 
And I'm like, this is like, does everybody get this? Or like, why am I getting this? I was really, I was a little nervous. Yeah. And, but I felt safe. I felt like you're asking me some really important questions. And they were asking me that to find out what services I needed. What do you need? Where are you at right now in this moment? What's your health like? What's your family like? You know, what do you need? And I thought, nobody's ever asked me that. Like we said, um, when I was chatting with you, when you go into the, the doctors, they, every time they ask you these questions, what you think, well, why are you asking me? No, you're asking me because I need, I need to be asked. And I needed to be asked. I needed to be educated. Um, they had like, do you have insurance? No, like, well, let's help you. Let's see, we did the whole sliding scale. Like I felt like, okay, I'm paying my share what I could afford. And then when I was blessed to actually walk in and meet Dr. Rivera, oh, it was like, she is an angel. And all, I mean, I've had other doctors as well when I couldn't get into Dr. Rivera, but they, like you said, they listen to you, they talk to you. You know, when you go in for that appointment, you're not like on a clock. Okay, like you have 10 minutes and I'm out. It's like, sit down. How are you feeling? Yeah, they're very respectful like this, of your time your when time. you're in the room with them. Yeah. It's amazing. And I, so I feel like that was probably the best part of knowing that I now had a practitioner, my own doctor. Dr. Rivera is my doctor. Mm -hmm. She knows me. She refers me to whoever I need. If there's an issue, she like digs and digs and digs and I can call and leave a message and she's going to get back to me. Who does that anymore? And this is hopes. It has hundreds and thousands probably of patients. And it doesn't matter who you are. You walk in that door and you're treated with dignity and respect. And it humbles me, like truly humbled me to walk in. And I'm sitting here and I'm seeing such a variety of culture around me. And I'm thinking, I am so lucky today. I am so blessed to be sitting here and meeting these amazing other patients that are here, hearing their stories and just the way you're treated. Yeah. Oh, did I answer your question? No, you did. I just got did. too involved in he, this. Yeah, I was uh, feeling very talking emotional. Talking about Dr. Rivera, like there's just so much to go in with having a provider who cares about you. Mm. Yeah, so I understand why you would just talk about I, anything. how amazing Dr. Rivera is and how amazing hopes is. And it sounds like it's impacted your life quite a bit. So when you mentioned when you were coming here for the first time, you had um, lost your mom. Mm. When I was first coming here, I was a caregiver for my dad. Yeah. And um, he was either going to go in a home or go in a home. And I was working at St. Albert's Church. I had insurance. I had all of that. I was parish life director. I had a purpose. And then we get that call, like he's going to go in a home or go in a home. So all of a sudden I walked away early retired, got a divorce, became a caregiver, no insurance. I was emotionally a wreck. Like, how am I going to do this? That's quite a life change. It, it, it was like, I don't even know what to do. And so during all this, my dad would even, um, you know, he taught me how to respect everybody, how to treat everybody. Like we're like you and I, are the, we're, we all like, as they say, put your pants on the same way. Um, and I wasn't taking time for me. I was making sure my dad made his appointments. I was making sure all that happened. And in the process of all this, I was lost. I felt like, where am I going to go? Like I I'm embarrassed. I don't have insurance. So taking the time to come to hopes and then meeting Dr. Rivera, like she's just mine. I, I they're all amazing. I like it, but I also love the idea that when I would come in, I also felt like I was getting, I don't want to say a therapy session. I felt like I was getting somebody to listen to me and hear my heart and say, like I say, how are you feeling today? And honestly, there's been times where I, I looked at her and she looked at me. She's like, come on. I'm like, no, I'm fine. No. Are you really fine? <laughs> no. I start crying. And she's like, okay, hold on now. Yeah. Yes. We're getting somewhere. And then she would say, do you need to talk to someone? Hang tight. Let me go get someone. Yeah. And then probably behavioral health yes, specialist came to you. But I'm saying you. they came in yeah. right then. Yeah. Talk to me. Sat with me like you are. Yeah. And I'm like, who does this? Yeah. What other healthcare model has that? 
It's a big deal. It's a really big deal. Like we have case managers here that are able to see people too if they need some type of help with housing. Like that's amazing. Like I don't know any other healthcare facilities that offer that. And the other cool thing is now we're talking about what they have. When I was here not having insurance and I was on a limited income, um, on the third floor where we are right now, there's a, a little nook and cranny. I don't know what it's called, but they help you. They listen to you. Like I, They help me fill out my paperwork to get my insurance, to even know like what steps to take and like well, how to fill out the paperwork. Here I am, Bowtown Deb, and I'm doing interviews and I'm doing this, but yet I was so afraid to go ask for help. How do I fill out this so I can get help? It's brave to ask for help. There's so much courage to just ask for help and people don't realize that. So I was very blessed. And then the other really good point about here is I love the idea that you, when you go see the doctor and you need labs, you can just go right here and get your labs. Yeah, and you we can just make have it on the second floor. <laughs> and you can make an appointment too, yeah. so you don't have to wait. And they're so kind to you in there when you're nervous. Like, I'm just telling you, from the time you check into your appointment, from the time you leave and say, thank you, they look you in the eye and they say, how are you? Thank you for being here today. And it's so impactful having that question asked to you. It's a simple question. Yeah. But it means so much. Yeah. So, yeah. Really is. Yeah. Okay. So, my next question yes. would have to be How has Hopes helped you outside of healthcare? Well, I would say, I think the, like I mentioned, the, uh, the pharmacy, the pharmacy right here, um, the lab right here, the idea when I am having a rough time being able to call and say, I need someone to talk to and not be ashamed to say that. So I think that, that I think just, and just meeting you, I mean, being able to now being, um, having my show a format to support and bring people together. So here I am years later, I'm here, the third floor, I'm interviewing you and sh I'm going to interview Sharon and I had Jenny and you're hearing my story. This, this building just says it all. It's a community. It's a community. It's a yeah. family. Yeah. So I, I, I just got to say, I, I know when I walk in this door, I'm going to always meet somebody new. I'm going to hear a story about a patient and um, I'm going to feel better when I walk out. And that leads me to my next question. Oh, no. What does the community aspect of hopes mean to you? Okay. Well, I'm going to be honest. I was a little prepped for this. So I do have notes on this because I didn't want to get this wrong. So I want to make <laughs> sure we get this right. And we've kind of talked about this. Mm -hmm. Walking into Hopes, you're immediately reminded of the diverse tapestry of life. And it humbles you. It humbled me seeing the people of all walks of life. And each of us have our own story. And the fact that we can tell our story here and over and over again, and they're going to listen and they're going to care. So for me, it's the true meaning of community. And as About Town Deb, I have my Together We're One Heart. I'm about connecting people. I'm about community. So where else would I be? It's like, this is a place where everybody is welcome and we're valued and you're supported in your journey. Like your journey, my journey, Jenny's journey, Sharon, wait to hear Sharon's journey. I mean, this is, it is a place of hope. So I'm just grateful to be sitting here right now. I'm very grateful to be sitting here right now <laughs> with you too. I love this it. This is so much fun. Um, okay. So you got to visit our new Port Street clinic yes, yes what do you think as oh as you're going to hear i'm going to repeat myself with sharon because i'm telling you chills you are going to be amazed at the amount of people that are going to be impacted and helped and when they walk in that door you're going to have families walk into a, a doctor's office a therapist they're going to walk into the pharmacy um they're going to feel like i have a place where I'm wanted, a place to be listened to. Yeah. And it, the, the design and the architect and the, the um, spots for the open space and there's like a parking garage where you, you're safe. And I, I can't even just tell you, I, I'm just honored to be in a community where there are Sharon Chamberlains and the team members that, like you said, if you work here, you work here for a reason. You care. And when you walk in that new building, they're going to know they're cared for. 
Yeah. So you, I'm just so excited for the grand, grand opening where I will get to be there. Yes. Yeah, I can't wait for that in May. It's going to happen. We're oh. still trying to figure out a date, but it's going to happen in May. It'll be great. <laughs> it's going to be wonderful. Okay, and last question. Okay. Uh, what message would you like to share about Hope? Okay, well, I actually reflected on that Ooh, too as well. Right. So be patient with this one. I had this all planned. And then I woke up this morning and I'm like, I, I really want to dig deeper. So I sat down and I wrote down some notes. And this is really what I, I want to end my interview or your interview with me with. So here it goes. This is my reflection from About Town Deb. In the journey of life, it's vital to remember that amidst the darkness, there's always a beacon of hope. Hope's Clinic. Hope stands as the beacon in our community, illuminating the path to safety and acceptance. And again, they're going to have safety and acceptance no matter where they are at Hope's Clinic. The decision to step towards the light, to open the door and walk in, can feel daunting, as we know, especially when you're vulnerable. We've been talking about this. This yeah. is so exciting. I wrote this before I even talked to all you guys. This is so cool. <sighs> but it's in those moments of bravery that we find strength. Hopes is where you're embraced for who you are, where you are, no matter what your circumstances. As about town, Deb, even, even I have found my sanctuary here with Dr. Rivera and the compassionate team at Hopes. It's a powerful reminder that we're never alone and hope is always within the reach, ready to transform our lives. That's I will leave it at that. That is beautiful. Yeah, it brings me back to a brainstorming session we were having where um, we were trying to think of different slogans for our campaign. Yes. And one of them that was brought up that has just stuck with me is when you can't see hope, hopes finds you. And that's just so impactful because hopes will be there and it will find you. Hopes found Jenny. Hopes found you. Hopes found me. Hopes will find you. Whew. We're going to take a break and we come back. You're going to hear from the amazing Sharon Chamberlain. Hang tight. It's about town, Deb City Talk. Welcome back. It's About Town Deb, Debbie McCarthy with City Talk. As I've mentioned, I am right here at Northern Nevada Hopes, Reno, Nevada. Just huh, beautiful backdrop here. And you're going to get to meet a very special lady, Sharon Chamberlain, CEO of Northern Nevada Hopes. And before I introduce her, I have a quote that I think fits her just perfect. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Gandhi. I feel like Sharon has lost herself, found herself. She's here for all of us. So welcome, Sharon, to the set. And just, I'm honored. I'm so excited to be with, here with you right now. You have no idea. Oh, I'm excited to be here. That is a beautiful, beautiful quote. Um, it's you. I love that. I, it's you. I just think that that's, that's beautiful. Thank you. I'm going to do a little backdrop here for you. When the clinic was first opened... I was here for media day. I remember the excitement of parking across the street <laughs> and we all had, I think there was cones out to guide us over here. Yes. And we were, I'm not sure which room we were in, but it was packed with media and friends yes. and family. And I was like, who's that? That's Sharon. <laughs> and I'm looking and your word spoke to me. Oh. And at that moment where you were so honored and proud to be there representing hopes in our community, I'm like, Hey, if Sharon's, I, I, I need to know, I'm looking for a doctor. I need to go there. So really you were one of the first wow. words that inspired me. And now I'm sitting here with you. So enough That's of that. That's beautiful. I, I love wanted, that story. I wanted you to know that. So yeah. I wanted you to know how 
I'm I'm so excited just to be here. So let me get on with the interview now. <laughs> it's like I'm like your fan. <laughs> I, had to, I had to get that over with. Okay. So a lot of people may not know what is Northern Nevada Hopes. And this is your baby and your team's baby. So can you share with us what what is Northern Nevada Hopes? Hopes is amazing. You know, I am so proud. I tell people all the time I'm the luckiest <laughs> CEO in the entire world, and I mean that. Um, I get to come to work to a place every day that helps people, and we do that through providing primary care, behavioral health, um, support services like case management and mm -hmm. transportation, pharmacy, psychiatry, medication-assisted treatment, substance abuse treatment. The list just goes on and <laughs> on, and it's because we treat people and understand that health is very holistic and you can't just treat somebody's diabetes or hypertension you really need to look at people in a and look at all of us we all need to do this look at ourselves in a very holistic manner to make sure that everything's lining up and you're getting the support in all of those areas during the whole process of when people are coming to hopes um, how would you suggest I mean how do they find hopes that when they walk in that door what can they expect you know what? Anybody that walks through our doors um, can be expect can expect to be treated with kindness. Number one, um, and we talk about that with staff, kindness and dignity. And we say it starts with staff. So we treat each other with kindness and dignity at Hopes. The staff do, and then that of course folds over into our patients. So no matter where you are in life, uh, you could be experiencing homelessness. Um, you could be struggling with substance use or mental health issues. You could be struggling with controlling your diabetes. It doesn't matter where you are in life, you walk through this door and you're going to be met with kindness and dignity and we're going to help you make healthier choices. Well, you are providing hope. I love the name Hopes, Northern Nevada Hopes. You've also are expanding. Can you share a little bit about the expansion? I was able to be at that opening media day too. I feel like I'm so honored. So tell us what's coming next. We're very excited to be opening a new clinic on East 4th Street, uh, right downtown across the street from Tiny Homes, Hope Springs, our tiny home project, and right in front of the CARES campus, which is what's run by Washoe County, the homeless say, shelter. Can you say a little bit about that? Sure. So that people will understand the whole connection of all you guys being together? Sure. We like to call it the corridor of hope. And yes. um, You've got the you've got the CARES campus, which is run by Washoe County. It's the largest homeless shelter uh, in the U.S. And um, there's individuals there, about over 600 individuals every night that are houseless and need a place to stay. So they're there. And then right in front of that is our new clinic. On so you can see it if you're driving down East Fourth Street. Right across the street is Hope Springs, and it's just a great area for people to come and access care and get the help that they need. Again, no matter where they are in life. So we will be serving, yes, the individuals at the CARES campus, the people experiencing homelessness, but we will also be working with the entire population around the area in those neighborhoods. So when I was able to tour the facility, and we, um, I do have photos that you'll be seeing, but they're renderings because we could not take a photo of the actual building <laughs> yet, but we will be there when we're able to take those That's photos. Right. As I was walking through the tour, I had goosebumps. I felt like Wow, this is a place where the people who live in the neighborhood, like you said, you, they have a home they could go to, they could have a doctor, they could, there's a pharmacy there. The ones who don't, like a lot of the places there's drive up pharmacies, what if you don't have a car, you have a walk up window, yes. you've thought of everything <laughs> and the lighting like this, you're bringing them sunshine and light and, and it's a place where you can go and feel, you built this for me, Yeah, it's clean. It's yeah. beautiful. I feel safe. You know, how cool is that? Yeah. So I'm sure a lot of thought went into it. And um, I also would like you to talk about some of the generosity of our community <laughs> that helped fund it. Can you yeah. go into a little bit of that? Absolutely. So there was so much thought to put into the building and we wanted to ensure, you know, East 4th Street is is a little rough, right? Um, yeah, it's, a little, it's a rougher part of our yeah. city. Um, and we wanted to ensure that the people that came in to access services there felt welcome, just like they do at the West 5th Street building. So you're right, we have beautiful glass entryways and uh, beautiful views of the mountains and all of those things. Things to make people feel like, yes, no matter where I am in life, I deserve the best care possible. So that's that's why we built it and structured that way. The community stood behind us 100%. Uh, it was so wonderful to feel the 
passion and the compassion of local individuals and foundations and others in the community and then international philanthropists that Talk about that phone so, call. That Talk about so the phone hard call. to make this come true. Yes. Talk about the phone call. Well, it was, it was very exciting. <laughs> Talk about so, that. Uh, Mackenzie Scott. Um, who is Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, uh, reached out to me. And I thought that it was, I thought that it was just a crank call <laughs> or whatever, a can't crank email. And I almost didn't respond. So um, I almost just deleted it. And I'm so glad that I did not. So I sent it to my IT guy and he was like, yeah, no, this that's is real. real. And so we reached out and unsolicited, this is what's amazing, is unsolicited, she had done private research and really investigated hopes in our practices and who we serve. And, and was so impressed by the work that we do that she gave us a $6 million unsolicited gift to help this project come to fruition. Six million, did you hear that? Six million. <laughs> It was amazing. It was amazing. It was the largest gift that we've received um, ever. And you know, you don't get unsolicited gifts. You know, so it doesn't happen. But doesn't that say a lot about your team? It says everything. The team that we have here is outstanding. Um, everything from um, the people that greet you when you walk in the door to the people that work in the facilities to the providers that we have to our incredible philanthropy and communications team. Everybody works together and everybody's driven by the mission. I get that. So what is the name of our new building? The, and who is it named after? It is. This is super exciting, too. Um, we've named the building the Jerry Smith Community Wellness Center. And it's named after Jerry Smith, who was the um, president and CEO of the Redfield Foundation. Okay. And an incredible guy that <sighs> just uh, supported so much uh, local nonprofits in the community through the Redfield Foundation. And just did an amazing job of connecting people together with other nonprofits. And that was one of the best things that he did for me uh, when I first moved into town was get me connected with other people um, and other agencies to ensure that we work together and complement each other. It's about connecting. That's right. That's why I'm so blessed to be here because I'm a connector. Um, I do have a few questions that I personally wanted to ask you. So sure. I'm going to look at my notes because I want this to be right because it was very important to me. So looking back, at the last decade, is there a moment or a decision that felt particularly like, like, you know, pivotal to you personally and to Hope's journey at that moment, perhaps like, did it make you feel like this is the moment? Like I was talking with, with Jeeve and I said, is there a moment where you knew you were where you need to be? Is there a moment in this past decade where you're like, yes. You know, I think the first moment was when we decided to move from being an HIV organization into being a, a community health center that provided primary care services. Um, that moment when we made the decision, I'll never forget, we were, we were, it was the board was in there, the executive team, um, we had done all of this work, all of this research, everything came to this moment and this one vote. And they sat in the room and I thought, what are the, what's the board going to do? And they said, yes, let's go for it. Let's become a federally qualified health center and do this expansion. And that changed everything because from there we were able to make this building on West Fifth Street and expand to 12,000 patients. <sighs> and now here we are expanding again at East 4th Street. Okay, I have another one for you. Okay. A little bit more personal, maybe. Um, not really. So this is about the core of, of the leadership here. And you are the core of the leadership. So often the, the paths we cross are really deep and they're connecting. And we know like when we're, we're somewhere where we need to be, is there a moment, maybe perhaps in your childhood or your adult life, when you felt a clear sense <laughs> that supporting and healing communities was part of your mission? Well, I've got a funny story about that. I want to know. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, well, here you go. I'm ready. Um, I I have been working in a so I, I experienced homeless myself, homelessness oh, myself. See, I did not know that. Um, and um, it was really challenging when I was out there. And the biggest thing that I felt was I just felt invisible, and um, that was the hardest part of it. So um, at some point, I I everything came together for me. I had so much love and support, and things came together for me. And I ended up out of homelessness. Ended up in a corporate job. Just 
just did not like it. It sucked my soul dry. A job came open at a local HIV nonprofit um, up in Oregon, and uh, it was a part-time job to run a syringe services program for people who inject drugs. And I thought, you know what? I would like to see if I could get that job. And I did. I don't think anybody else applied because I got the job. So I quit my corporate job, went to this little half-time uh, nonprofit job. And the first night that we went out with the syringe services van, um, we were wondering if people would even show up. We hadn't started the program yet. It was the first time ever that we had been out. And people started coming out of the bushes. And people just started flooding there. And they were so kind and so respectful and so thankful for the services that we were providing that it really impacted me. And that night, this one gentleman showed up and he was very intoxicated. And for some reason, he zoned right in on me and was just talking to me. And uh, we talked for quite a long time. I can't remember exactly what we talked about. But when we were done, he leaned in to give me a hug. And when he gave me a hug, I kind of fell back a little bit because he was pretty intoxicated and he urinated all over me. And it was actually I did that not know moment. where this story was going. I thought you were going to say your heart melted. <laughs> it was that moment that I thought, this is exactly where, where I'm supposed to be. And these are my people. And I never looked back after that moment. And uh, that moment and that man changed my entire life. I love this story. I'm going to go, you said something earlier that you wanted like about being seen i'm not sure exactly how you said it and i'm going to share this thought because my birth mom mm -hmm. i've had my own journey grandma b passed in october and mm -hmm. going through her paperwork and her little diaries and as a child she had a really a rough time yeah. and i did too as well but she said lots of times I don't feel seen. I feel invisible. And she'd write in this little notebook mm. over and over again, like, I'm not seen. Please, God help me. I'm, I'm going to, I have faith. I can get through this. And I wished she had a place yeah. like this where she would have walked in that door and felt seen because yeah. she didn't have the finances as well. Yes. So when you said that, I'm like, Grandma B, you're smiling down oh. right now because people want to be heard and seen, even if they don't think they do. Yeah. But you're giving us that opportunity to be seen. So yeah. thank you for saying those words, because I feel like Grandma B, she's also the reason why I'm doing my show. Oh. She also um, like saved up money to buy my set. Wow. So you're still here. You're Wonderful. That, that was like a little God moment. That's beautiful. So I, I'm going to do, I'm going to have one more question, because I don't want, I know you're crazy busy. Um, so envisioning the future and honoring influences. As we look towards the horizon, Sharon, where do you see yourself in Northern Nevada hopes in the next five years? And as you reflect on this incredible journey that you've had and led this foundation of hope and support, could you share with us who has walked by your side, inspired you and guided you through these transforming years? Wow. Um, great question. Five years. So the first goal is to get East 4th Street up and running. Yes. See those 14,000 patients, yeah. 90,000 visits a year. That's going to take us a few years yes. to get there. Um, I think what we're going to do and what Hopes is so great at is looking at that moment in three years, we will be looking at the community and saying, what's the biggest need again? And when we when we understand in three years, because it's going to change, you know, is it behavioral health? Is it seniors? Is it, I don't know what it's going to be, but we're going to look at and say, this is the biggest problem facing us right now. And this is how hopes can jump in and help. So um, I, I'm not sure exactly where we're going to be, but we're going to be filling and uh, fulfilling a need in the community. Well, I feel like you guys are always looking for the future. You're looking towards that future. So I know that there's probably something in the works right now that we don't even <laughs> know about that we're going to find out about. Um, if you could say one thing to, to end, end your segment today to provide hope, what would it be? You know, I, I think the number one thing uh, for me was when I felt connected um, in with other people, um, it gave me hope. And I just encourage everyone to look at themselves and look at the loved ones around them and their neighbors and their coworkers and ensure that we're connecting with those individuals. That's the number one thing that we can do as a human family to make the world a better place. Wow. Sharon, thank you. Thank I, you. I, oh, wow. This has been an incredible day, an incredible show. I am so honored. 
Um, I do want to do a few thank yous. Number one, thank you to your amazing team that reached out. It was such a credible honor to hear from Mary and Jeev. Um, we had coffee um, and it just felt like it was blossoming and like mm. there was a reason why I was going to be here right now today. And I always say at the end of my shows, together we're one heart. Mm. But I just want you all to remember, together we are one heart, providing hope one heartbeat at a time. Thank you for joining me, About Town Deb, on this journey of hope and healing. Let us continue to make a difference together. It's About Town Deb. So honored to be here at Northern Nevada Hopes. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you.